When people think of high-end headphones, certain brand names pop up. There is very little reasonable debate whether headphones that cost multi thousands of dollars produce demonstrably better sound. The whole purpose of uber luxury headphones is to entice a very small sector of the hobby. Here we have the Meze Elite. This $4,000 headphone is the company's cream of the crop, and the folks at Meze were kind enough to let me borrow it to review. Before we get into all the stuff, let's answer one primary question. Why even bother with expensive headphones? The never-ending debate among audiophiles is whether expensive gear is actually better in objective terms compared to more affordable or downright cheap stuff. I think that's a complicated question requiring a complicated answer. To be honest, yes, expensive gear does have some objective benefits. For example, more costly gear can, though not always, be made with more robust components than their cheaper counterparts. And generally, companies that sell headphones valued the same as some used cars tend to provide more consistent, positive customer service. On the other hand, it is a virtual guarantee that uber expensive headphones will not come with better or more accessories compared to cheaper products. So what really makes the difference? Look at it the same way as when somebody buys a $300,000 Bentley Bentayga. It's not because Bentley's cars are better, it's because they are a status symbol. High-end headphones are the same thing. They are a status symbol for those who have disposable cash, and you simply cannot judge such products with a critical eye towards value. There simply is no value to be found. So let's discuss the Meze Elite's eliteness. This hand-built headphone is not a rehash of the comparatively more affordable Empyrean. The two headphones share an aesthetic quality, but not the same driver. Meze's goal behind the Elite is very clearly stated. They say, quote, we use innovative designs and technologies that perfectly complete each other to create pure emotion. And that's the key, emotion. Every angle of this headphone, every marketing blurb is engineered to make an emotional connection, not a rational one. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and many will find the Maze's designs, well, utterly off-putting. Others will see inspiration and boldness. Whatever camp you are in, there is no denying that Maze's style is unique. Nobody matches their aesthetic choices. You can debate whether the Elite looks better in tungsten or aluminum. I've got the aluminum version, and when I compare to the tungstens online, I really dig its more stealth look. Reflective aluminum is not really my cup of tea. That aside, Meze has once again crafted a headphone that actually conforms to head shape and size. The Elite is reasonably light. It sits far, far more comfortably than the vast majority of Odyssey's headphones, including the ostensibly lighter LCD 4Z. The generous ear pads on these elites enclose the ears. Now, that's not novel to Meze, but if you compare other luxury brands and their top tier headphones, you'll see that not everybody follows this maxim. Sony's MDR-Z1R is the most expensive audiophile headphone in production from that company, and their ear pads are not as comfortable as the Elite's. The Odyssey LCD 4Z has ear pads that are stiffer, less spacious than that of the Elite. The Klipsch Heritage and Denon D9200 also do not have ear pads nearly as comfortable as that of the Elite. Size and weight is also a relevant factor. Odyssey has never been known to care and most of their headphones are on the heavier side. The head audio headphone takes that to the extreme, having a ridiculously large frame that is both unwieldy and uncomfortable. In fact, you might as well wear bookshelf speakers on your head. Maybe the headphone that comes closest to the Elite's comfort and lightness, at least in my collection, is the Focal Utopia. 
but the Utopia, because of its smaller ear pads, doesn't quite sit as comfortably for me as the Elite does. So, when I look at the Elite, I see a headphone that was designed top to bottom with comfort in mind. When you've been used to expensive headphones that put comfort somewhere near the end of their to-do list, you tend to become more aware of it, or lack of it. Maze provides two kinds of earpads with the Elite, Alcantara and a hybrid Alcantara leather. Both will have a slight but noticeable alteration to the sound compared to each other. You don't get any replacement earpads from Odyssey, Sony, Head Audio, Focal, let alone alternative ear pads. If there's an issue I have with the Elite's design and accessories, it has to be with the cable. Now, I got the one that's the shorter version of the cable. It's my understanding that Elite actually ships two cables, a long one and a short one. The short cable that I have is too short for desktop use and transmits a significant amount of microphonics. I don't know how this passed quality control. Companies need to stop sheathing their cables with Kevlar. It's a damn cable, not the heir to the throne. I used the Elite for several weeks, paired it with a lot of my gear, including the following. The Burson 3XR, MyTek Brooklyn DAC Plus, Matrix Mini i Pro 3, KN iDAC 6 Mark II with the KN Ha 1A Mark II, Wu Audio WA8, Wu Audio WA11, Astro and Kern SA700, and the Low 2 Paw 6000. In my experience, I think the Elite can be driven by almost any device, but if you want the best performance, it's probably a good idea to pair it with an amp that outputs a few hundred milliwatts. I listened to my usual lossless test playlist, streamed content, and consumed a variety of high and low resolution audio. I compared the Elite against the LCD 4Z, Focal Utopia, and the Meze Imperion first generation using my usual AB comparison setup. My impression of the Elite's overall sound signature is well, okay, and that depends on which ear pads you're using. With the hybrid pads, it's as neutral a sound signature as I have yet heard. Everything is controlled. Bass, mids, and treble. The bass does have a noticeable roll-off in sub-bass. Those deep frequencies are not particularly obvious in tracks that have them. On the other hand, transients is quick, as fast as any planar magnetic headphone tends to be. Separation of sub-bass from mid-bass is evident. Drum strikes are precise, fast, impactful, without ever sounding harsh, piercing, or overly emphasized. The Elite very well controls bass distortion. The Sicario soundtrack is an excellent resource to push your headphones to their bass breaking point. The Elite passed that test with flying colors. Even at my maximum volume comfort level, the Elite never audibly distorted. In my test, the Elite's bass response was marginally more neutral, slightly more emphasized than that of the 4Z, Empyrean, and the Utopia. All three of these competitors had a greater reduction in some bass, particularly the Utopia. Clarity, separation, detail in bass was marginally different among all four headphones, and nothing was, frankly, night and day. In other words, all of these were fairly comparable to each other, very similar in clarity, separation, and detail in the bass region. The Elite's mids are clear. Vocals are close to the ears, separate from competing instruments. The Elite does not emphasize vocal siblings or grain. It tends to render what is recorded. So in Orla Gartland's Why Am I Like This, I heard the slight hint of sibilance and vocal grain the track is mixed with, and none of the peaky harshness that some companies tend to favor in their tuning. In comparison, the Utopia pushes vocal grain and sibilance, but its separation of mid elements is similar to that of the Elite. The Empyrean does emphasize sibilance about as much as that of the Utopia. Clarity and separation is probably slightly more obvious on the Elite compared to the Empyrean. Finally, the 4Z has a noticeable emphasis of vocal grain and sibilance, but separation and clarity is pretty much similar across the board here. The Elite's treble is clear, with perhaps a slight emphasis in the mid-treble. Instruments are never harsh, peaky, or otherwise uncomfortable at loud volumes. Brass and horns retain their unique gravelly natures. 
group sets and an orchestral mix are easy to differentiate, although individual instruments in a group are obviously not. The 4Z treble sounds similar to the Elite, but provides just a slight bit more detail to treble instruments and separation. The Imperian has slightly greater treble emphasis in the upper treble area compared to the Elite, but separation and clarity seems pretty much similar. The Utopia has a noticeable upper treble emphasis, and it had more obvious placement and separation than any of the other headphones that I compared. Overall detail retrieval is not all that different across the board here. The Utopia, 4Z, Empyrean, and Elite all tend to act similarly where it comes to detail rendition. There are slight variations. For example, the Utopia does produce more obvious separation or elements, such as electric buzzing effects and creaking of wood, etc, etc. But none of these headphones is a night and day difference. If you throw something like the HD800S or the Austrian Audio Hi X65 into the mix, then that would be a night and day alteration to detail retrieval. In my New Light footstep test, all of the compared headphones here presented 9 to 10 clear footsteps. As for soundstage, the Utopia was the only one that had a noticeable difference. The Utopia had slightly wider soundstage compared to the rest. The Empyrean 4Z and Elite have soundstage that's pretty much very, very comparable. All four headphones have soundstages that I categorize as above average, average being the HD6XX and LCD1. And none of these headphones has the soundstage of the HD800S or the Hi-Fi Man Diva, or even the Austrian Audio Hi-X 65 or 55. The Elite's Alcantara earpads produce a noticeable departure in the sound signature compared to the hybrid earpads that I've been talking about. The Alcantara has a more obvious bass roll-off, a bit more forward vocals with an emphasis in sibilance, slightly more emphasized treble, and a marginally wider soundstage. But detail is not really affected here. You will not find value here. Move along. None of these top-tier headphones justifies their existence to those looking for a rational purchase. Rationality has little to do with luxury products, and I'm beginning to think that rationality has very little to do with any real hobby. But let's be clear, you don't need to spend $4,000 to get a premium experience. The Sendy Audio Peacock will offer you a similar luxury aesthetic, but for one quarter the price. Hell, you could spend around $700 on the Clear Next and be gobsmacked by its stellar build, design, accessories well before you get into the sound signature. The point is that companies can scream all they want that their $4,000 headphone is the best. It's just not true. That's why it's all about emotion. The headphones build quality, comfort, aesthetics, and brand name are the biggest factors. Sound signature preference is the last, but also a very critical key component. Now, to that point, there's no such thing as the best sounding headphone. There are poor performing headphones, those that audibly distort or need a proverbial power plant to function, or are simply built cheaply, but cost like they were handed down by Zeus himself. But sound is subjective. Just because someone says that the Elite is the best sounding headphone in its class, doesn't make it true. Someone else can readily claim the same thing for the 4Z or the Utopia or, frankly, any number of headphones that cost only a fraction of the price. Look, if you're shopping in this price bracket, you don't need me or anybody else telling you what to buy. You're making a decision based on what visually appeals to you and what you hope will sonically cater to your preference, just like every single person who buys a headphone. You just happen to have a ton more money to get rid of. Ultimately, I think there's a lot to like about the Elite. My experience with this company's products over the past eight years has been nothing but positive. It's a good company with good customer service offering good products. The Elite is an Elite headphone for Elites looking to impress.